In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your raw drum tracks from this to this. Using only stock plugins in Logic. All right, let's get into it. Let's look at our kicks. We've got kick in and kick out, and they're being sent to a kick bus. And this bus is being sent to our drum bus. All of the drum processing ends up back here. So on our kick bus, we have an expander, which is like a gate, but it's a bit smoother sounding. And that's gonna clean up a bit of the bleed in between the kick hits. I'm using the vintage tube EQ next, boosting some subby 40 hertz and a bit of a cut, a bit of a pull tech trick. Gonna see a bit of that in this video. And then we're boosting some 10K for a bit of that clicky top end and then rolling off a little bit of the really ultra high 20K frequencies. Bit of a dip around 300 hertz, 400 hertz, just cleaning up some mud. And a little bit of a push back into 2K for a bit more attack. Follow it up with some compression because we wanna make this smack a little bit harder. We've got the vintage FET, Slow attack, medium fast release, four to one ratio, sounds like this. Last but not least, graphic EQ, scooping out some lower mids, get a bit more of that subby rock kick sound and a little bit of a pull down at 8K, just getting a little too ticky for me. Cool, moving on, snare drum. Got our snare top and bottom, which I've blended together and they're being sent to a snare bus here. Same thing, an expander to gate it a little bit. Gets rid of some of that bleed in between the hits. And then a bit of EQ, we're gonna boost 100 hertz and cut 100 hertz at the same spot, just a little bit, and then boost around 7K, just to add some attack. And then just a little bit of a roll off around 20K, just to get rid of some of the harshness out of it and smooth it out a bit. Down the bottom here, mostly just doing a cut around 400 hertz, just pulling some mud out of the sound. Compression next, went with the classic VCA for a more smacky sound. There's no attack or release there, you just get what you get. And then over here, just grab the channel EQ and cut a little bit of 6.5K because I found it was a little harsh sounding. We also have a parallel snare bus here called Snare Process. And on this one, I'm just gonna process it a bit harder and blend it in with that. So we're gating it, following it up with an expander, smooths it out a bit. Boosting, again around 100 hertz, but a big cut this time. So it's gonna create quite a presence shift and scoop a bit of the mid range out. Then we're boosting around 6K, just getting some attack going there. Bit of a cut around 400, 300 hertz again down here. Bit of a push at 3K, just to add some more smack and attack in that top end. Following that up with the enveloper plugin, and this is kind of like a transient design type thing. We're gonna push the attack, push a tiny bit of release. Just want it to hit hard. And then we're going to follow that up with the Studio FET compressor. So some real smack. And we're going pretty aggressive with that, but then we just blend it in. So I felt like the snare needed a little bit more, so I reached for a sample to blend in with these sounds. Normally I'd use Steven Slate Trigger 2 if I'm going to use samples, but today, since we're doing everything in Logic, I've just used the drum replacement feature. So all you have to do for that is click on your snare channel, hold Control D, and then it's going to analyze it. The threshold here will let you set how sensitive it is to pick up all your snare hits down here. You can play the track and listen and pick different snare sounds and then hit OK. Then it makes a software instrument track for you here. I opened it up and all I did in here was change all of the velocities. I pressed Command A, came in here, MIDI transform, fixed velocity, and then I set about 115 because I wanted to be hard hits and then blended it in with my snare sound. So it sounds all right. Next up, we've got our toms. So again, we have the expander first to clean it up a little bit. If you watch my video about not gating your toms and doing this where you cut them out and clean them up manually, you'll hear that it already sounds pretty good even without the expander on. But that's just gonna clean it up a little bit extra. Then we're gonna follow this up with the vintage console EQ in Logic. And we're gonna boost from about 110 hertz, a couple of dB. We're gonna cut some mud out around 300 hertz again. Pretty big cut there, nearly five dB. And then a four dB boost in our high shelf here to add some stick attack to the sound. Cleans it up nicely. Then I grabbed the vintage graphic EQ and I pulled down about 3 dB at 250 hertz. Again, pulling some more mud out, followed up with some compression. We've got the vintage VCA for this one. Nothing crazy going on. Fast attack, but letting the transient through and a fast release. Three to one ratio. And a limiter on the end, pushing it so it's hitting the limiter. 
So I pushed it 2 dB in and pulled it down 2 dB and that just keeps the unity level. Same settings for the floor tom, but then I think on the console EQ, I boosted a little bit more on that high shelf just to get the stick attack to sound similar to Tom 1. And then on the bus for our toms, a little bit extra pull down on 250 hertz. Just wanted to really scoop these out, get that fat low end and a smacky top end. Now let's have a look at our symbols. So we've got our overheads, ride and hats all being sent to a bus called symbols. So we've got the tube EQ and we're boosting and cutting about the same amount at 100 hertz to get that present shift. And then we're boosting at 3K just a little bit and a bit of a roll off at 20K. Bit of a cut around five to 600 hertz here, getting rid of some mud and touch a drive. One thing to note on all of these EQs, make sure it's in linear phase because when it's in natural, the phase seem to keep changing. So using linear phase kept everything in phase. Okay, we follow that up with the console EQ, another little boost at about 110 hertz, bit of a cut again around 700 hertz, just cleaning up those mid range again. We've got a high pass filter around 80 hertz and that's it for that one. Compression, just went with the vintage FET on this one, two to one ratio, medium attack, faster release, and just a couple of dBs gain reduction. Sounds like this. And then we follow that up with our graphic EQ, a little bit of a 250 Hertz pull here, must be a frequency that is a bit of a problem. And then just cutting some upper mids to let it spark a little bit more on those high frequencies. Then I just grabbed the channel EQ, felt like I needed to do a bit of a wide bell pull down around four and a half K, just to get rid of some harsh cymbal sounds. And I also did a surgical cut at 3.9K, just a bit of a resonance that was coming through on one of the crash cymbals. Now on our hat spot mics, we did a little bit of a EQ here as well. Just similar thing, boosting and cutting that low end, just trying to bring a bit of body to the snare in the hi-hat mic. And then a bit of sparkle on the top end around 14K. And then I copy and pasted that over to my ride mic and then I just boosted a little bit extra up the top here. We've also got a bit of a cut down here at 300 hertz, just getting some dirt out of it. And our ride mic sounds like this. And we just blend that in with our overheads to get a nice balance. All right, then next up, our room mics. Let's have a look at these. With our room mics, we have a stereo room, an ambient room, a room far, and there's a dirt mic here as well. And now I'm gonna process that room bus. So tube EQ again, boosting at 30 hertz this time with a little bit of a cut there to get that pull tech present shift again. And then we're boosting some air into 14K. Bit of a big cut here around 400 hertz where there's a bit of a buildup and a bit of a boost at 4K just to add some more presence back in. A Little bit of a roll off around 20K. Cleans it up nicely. Now I followed it up with chroma verb for a little bit extra room sound to my room sound. Room. 1.10 second release because it's a fast song. We don't need a long reverb, 27% wet. Follow it up with an opto compressor. I like the sound of opto compression on room mics. Makes them nice and thick and squishy. And then just a little bit of a cut on the channel EQ around 5K, just some of that cymbal harshness. And then we blend that in with our drums. Now let's process our drum bus. We've got the vintage console EQ here, doing a low shelf boost at about 150 hertz and a mid range boost at 3.2K, just adding some smack into that region. And then a small boost with the high shelf to add a little bit of airiness to the drums. So just accentuating a couple of frequencies here. Follow that up with the channel EQ. We've got a high pass filter and a couple of notches. So the high pass filter is at 34 hertz, just cleaning up a bit of rumble in the low end, just notching away a few frequencies that I was finding annoying. Small notch at 140 hertz and then at 300 178 hertz and then a notch around 6.3k cleaning out some harshness up here drum bus compression going with the classic vca and then last but not least a limiter on the end we're pushing four and a half db in and then pulling down four and a half db so we just want to keep the level the same but we're going to try and get the limiter reacting to the snare just a little bit it's not touching the limiter just yet because we need to apply a little bit more processing before that happens. Next up, we have a bunch of parallel buses and some effects that we're gonna send into our drum bus here. 
So I'm gonna turn on all these sends and then I'm gonna run you through how I've got this set up. To start with, we're gonna do our parallel compression, which is our crush channel here. So I'm sending the kick, snare, toms, a little bit of overheads and a little bit of room into it. Now, all we have here is console EQ again, boosting around 110 Hertz and boosting around 5K in the mids. We're trying to add a bit more thump and attack to this. Then we're gonna follow that up with an aggressive compressor. We've got the Studio VCA, four to one ratio, a fairly fast attack, but we're letting the transient through and then a fast release. Then we blend that in with our drum sound. Okay, next up we have a dirt channel, which is distortion, saturation. Mainly just got the kick, snare and tom sent to this. I'm using the fat effects plugin and basically just in the distortion section here, pushing a bit of soft saturation and vary drive. And then I came down and pulled the mix back a little bit to what I thought sounded good and then level matched it a bit better with the output. And then we just blend that in. Just a little bit of that's good. Now the next one we're gonna have a look at is our Excite bus. So we've got another send here and you guessed it, it's got an exciter on it. So we're sending everything to this. Now when you open this exciter plugin, it looks something like this. So you need to drag this back and get the frequencies you wanna target. So I'm just going for the airy stuff. So 16.8K. Make sure dry signal is off because we're using this in parallel. I've just cranked the harmonics up and gone with color too because I like the sound of that. It's not very pleasant on its own. We're just gonna blend that in with our kit. Little bit goes a long way. And then lastly, we're gonna do a couple of reverbs. So from our snare buses here, I've created two sends for snare reverbs. So we've just pulled up a preset drum chamber and then played with the dampening a little bit and the decay time. So went with 1.10 seconds. I also have this being sent to the parallel compression, the crush bus. Now our second snare reverb is a shorter ambience one. So we've got chroma verb again, and we used another preset, ambience, drums, ambience, and then again, tweaked the dampening and the EQ. And then I played with the decay time and went with about half a second. That's just gonna add a bit of thickness to the sound. Then we had a tom reverb as well, because we felt like the toms just needed a bit more presence. So again, we've got a send from our toms to our tom verb over here, chroma verb, and I went with a preset rooms, large wooden room, again, played with the dampening and then set the decay time, 1.3 seconds for this one. Just add some nice space to those toms. And then we blended that in over here, set the level of the reverb. That's also being sent to the parallel compression. Okay, and last but not least, we've got a reverb send from our whole drum bus here. And we're gonna use chroma verb again, another preset rooms, large studio drums room. And then I just tweak these settings a little bit, gone with a one second decay. And we're just dialing in a little bit of that. We don't need a lot. We've got the other reverbs. We're done. Let's compare our finished mix with the raw drums. So the raw drums don't sound bad, right? But they're lacking a little bit of punch and excitement, but they're really well recorded and the drums have been played really well. So it's easy for us to shape these into what we've now got. Let's have a listen to how these sound with the track behind it. You can hear the raw drums, they're not awful, but they're just not cutting it in the mix. With a high energy song like that, they just need that attack and the punch that we've now given them. And we did it all with stock plugins. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, learn a trick or two, and make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.